Hi right, guys and girls, Mark Crossfield here. What if I was to say to you that custom fits as we understand them are just getting it maybe completely wrong? And maybe there's a way better service that you could be having. And possibly the driver in your bag right now is encouraging you to make the really poor movements that you make that create the bad shots and cost you shots and your handicap coming down, possibly. I'm gonna use two drivers which are very extreme, which I'll show you in a second. I'm also gonna use my Swing Catalyst 3D Force plate to show you stuff that can't be seen, which will hopefully make it clear to you where you need to be careful how you think about custom fits going forwards. I'm just finishing off the data, I'll show you what I mean. So the two drivers I've got in my hand are like very opposite. This is a 10.5 degree draw Cleveland game improvement off the shelf driver compared to a 9.5 here, which is actually down to 8.5 in my ZX5. Like these are very opposite drivers. I'm going to show you what movements they encourage me to make to make them functional. So I'm going to finish off the data set here with the Cleveland draw 10.5. Like it just feels like so much loft for me. I feel quite drawy at the minute as well, so I'm managing that. What I want you to do, think about last time you had a fit. What was it built around? What was the fit actually built around? Which is kind of what we're going to touch on and hopefully show you with some measured data today. So you can see I'm making this one functional, like that's hitting fairway. A bit toey, which started further right, but it's coming back. Um, let's just show you some of the numbers on these. Oh, nearly a line ball. So if we take a look, they're obviously two very contrasting drivers, so I'm not expecting them to be the same. And this, I'm trying to make these numbers as similar as I can, bearing in mind how one is fit for me and one is completely, in theory, wrong for me. So mine is the ZX5, 164 to 161, and I'd expect that. I've got them launching at the same height because I manage the loft. The driver spins a little bit more in the Cleveland, which you'd imagine, because my ZX5 is definitely more of a lower spinning kind of driver. And then in turn, it just carries out that bit further. Standard deviations of these don't quite overlap. So you can see that the Cleveland is slightly shorter, but it's a massive extreme. They should be way, way different. I've done quite well at getting what I need out of those drivers, but let's show you how I did it. And then this will make you think, oh, okay. Because at the moment you're just probably thinking, well, I'm not good enough to manage anything. I just need one that suits me, which can be true, but maybe it's not. Watch this. So the force we're going to look at, we've got horizontal force here on the bottom, and then we've got vertical force here on the right. So left, sorry, is horizontal in the purples, and the blues here is vertical. So horizontal going this way, verticals going basically this way or this way. So think jump verticals and then horizontals think going this way and this way, okay? Now you're gonna see very different use of the ground as I try to make those lofts work. Which one's gonna have the stronger horizontal do you reckon? The least lofted one or the more lofted one? See where we're going? So this is my driver on the left here, 18% max back. And then my max back here for my horizontal is 21%. And you can see it in the graph. So the black bar here is tall averages of horizontal. So when you give me next to no loft or low lofts, I'm going to try and use vertical at the right time. So you can see my vertical on the one on the left here is peaking when my hands are kind of waist height where the one on the right here, which is the least or the more lofted club, these verticals that aren't peaking till here. And then when I get to impact, I mean, basically with 208%, 194% still in my vertical, where this one on the left here, similar ideas, we're at 163%. So I'm getting out of my vertical on this one and I'm using less horizontal force, loads more horizontal. Look how high the peak is compared to the two when you give me plenty of loft. And you can even see it in my knees, in my hip shift, in the way I'm trying to deliver that club. So you give me more loft and a club that might go left, I go across more. I go up. The verticals were actually slightly higher in this one, but they were later. I used horizontal brakes to try and hit vertical 
I didn't use that force as much. If I do my delivery with the smaller amount of loft, where I feel almost like I'm backing up, which gets the verticals out earlier, well, this one just feels like it's gonna go way left. So what I'm doing is I'm managing the club and then in turn, completely turning in the ground differently, pushing in the ground, then pushing and pulling on this differently to try and make this shot as functional as possible. Now I hear you. I'm not good enough to do that. That's like yours, great that you can do that, but I just want a club that's gonna fit my swing. That's the gonna be what people are saying, I get that. And there is elements of that 100%. But for me, the fact that I can shift those pressures so massively by changing the agenda of the shot, so the weapon, and then making the agenda hit target, so in effect you're changing the agenda of how I have to deliver, it just completely, absolutely flipped how I pushed on the ground and got the energies to the ball. Something that if I try and do without that agenda changing, so if I try and change presses in the ground and work with students and just say, look, why don't we try and get the horizontal you know, less horizontal, so feel like you're staying more on top of the ball, whatever the idea is. It's just really hard for them to shift it. But you give them a club where if they do their movement, it doesn't quite work as well as it should, rather than fitting a club into a movement that doesn't work. You see, there's the key. So if you've got a golfer who struggles to produce horizontal forces, they just don't use them very productively, let's, but let's say they got my speeds, what you're gonna find is by giving them a different loft, a different club, they now can start changing their movement pattern to encourage better launches. And then all that happens is you find out that they just, you know, they're hitting this one too far left because it's a draw, because that's also what's allowing me to use more horizontal on this occasion, because um, I'm trying to get that handle forwards, but I still can't control left. Then you might give them a bit more loft and neutral. But if you're just fitting that club to the player's faults, and we all have faults, me, everyone, then are they ever really going to have the incentive to change? This is what leads me on to say, which I've said for years, is that if you're not getting fit by someone who understands your movement patterns and how they can be affected by different lofts and, and measuring how they actually are affected, then surely you're just being sold a new club, which is fine. They, they, anyone who wants to be sold a new club, that's, absolute, that's a good reason to buy a new club. But fitting it around your delivery has its benefits, like it totally has its benefits, but it also can encourage you to maybe never ever make a change, making you, if this is you out there, just plateau, just level right out. If I wanted to improve my horizontal forces, which I don't, I'm happy using verticals, hence I use a low lofted driver. Uh, I play with Matt and he uses high lofted stuff. He looks at my driver and just thinks, how do you get that in the air? Well, I get that in the air because I'm just using vertical and not much horizontal. He's using a mixture of all of them, but then getting way hand, loads of handle lean. So he's looking at my driver thinking, well, I can't do that. Now let's pretend with someone like Matt who plays on my videos that you've seen all watch play. If we wanted to get him hitting drivers where he didn't have so much handle lean, yeah, I would take the loft off him. I would get him practicing with a really low lofted club, not give him a higher lofted driver that makes him do what I was doing with that club. And that is the key problem I see. Drivers fit the poor movements. Where's the lowest hanging fruit? That's always the question. When students come into me, I'm thinking if I can give them a driver and it makes them better, I'm gonna give them that driver. But if there's lower hanging fruit, getting a movement pattern change, which then can spread through every club and make them better, well, I'm gonna do that and then fit around that. And it's one of the common questions, isn't it? Should I get fit or should I have lessons? Well, for me, they're the same thing. And if they're not the same thing, I see that as a problem. They have to be seen very much as the same thing. I look at myself with drivers where I've got access to changing drivers literally every shot if I wanted to. So I'm fortunate that way. I go from drivers that have a draw bias to a fade bias subject to me changing an action and dialing it into what I want to see. So if I change an action to raise ball speeds, which is my goal, but that makes me too drawy, which has happened, then I move a driver around the shape I want to see. I might use the more fade bias one. So in effect, I'm doing I'm fitting to what you might call a fault, but I'm looking at the speed and thinking, right, I want that speed. How can I have that speed, but not have that left? I could do something, but I'm concentrating on speed. So I'm gonna do that. So again, this is where it can work both ways. You can fit the golfer, but for lots of golfers and certainly the everyday golfer that I see, 
They make movements that just make golf less enjoyable for them, yet they get fitted into those movements. Just a little example to finish with my eight degree or 8.5 degree driver here. I'm using 8.5 degree driver and I hit it a bit low and I struggle with it cutting too much. So I come for a lesson. I'm setting up with a weak grip and trying to add loft ball forward, handle back. And this is the only way I can get this driver actually functioning up in the air and, and moving on towards target. Where if you say to this person, right, I want you to use the same driver, but I want you to get the ball inside your lead uh, foot. I want the hands up to the ball, but as you come down and hit the ball, I want you to deliver, say, different loss with flicking forward or whatever action they have to do. Now, we start getting some functional, if I hit it out of the middle, which I didn't there, but it's nice and straight. Functional shots from some better patterns around the loft that we gave them, which in theory wasn't right. Once they get that working, yes, you'd work the 10 in and whatever you and say, look, let's try and do those movements just slightly and see what happens and balances it out. Fitting to your faults enhances them. If you get fit from people who don't do lessons, they're just gonna enhance what comes in the door. That isn't an enhancement because unfortunately, people tend to regress to the mean. You need to shift the needle, shifting the needle, Sometimes for me to shift the needle in my horizontals there, if that was something I wanted to pursue, I would be having a loft that in theory is completely wrong. Let me know if this makes sense. Let me know if it helps or if you want me to pursue and do more on this, because I think it's a really interesting subject. I do see golfers come in with some crazy clubs built around techniques that I think, well, we're gonna change that. That club's just not gonna work now because that club is set up for your you know, extreme setup, extreme grip, extreme movement. Has to be done all together for me, for you to feel like you're getting the value for money that you should be getting. Considering clubs aren't cheap and often custom fits aren't cheap and they shouldn't be, they're experts, but you should be getting expert service. Let me know what you think. As always down below, thanks for watching. My ball speed 164, it's getting there people. It's still not quick enough. I wonder if there's a different driver I could use.